Have you been wondering about your sex life and whether you have a low sex drive? In this video, you will learn some of the common causes of a low sex drive or low libido in young women. And make sure you watch to the end of this video so you can learn which one of them may apply to you and what you can do to get it treated. If you find watching this video helpful to you, make sure you give it a like, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so that you know every time we publish a new video once every week. Now let's go on and talk about the causes of low sex drive in young women. Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Sylvia, a general practitioner and health educator with Ask Your Way Health. Your libido or sex drive may be something that you take for granted. But a low sex drive means a reduced sexual interest or sexual desire. Now, a lack or a reduced sex drive can lead to problems in a relationship, but it could also happen as a result of issues in the relationship as we will find out shortly. Or it could be an indication that there is an underlying medical problem. Even though it's pretty common, affecting about 15% of women between the ages of 18 years and 44 years, it's not really a very easy symptom to talk about. For example, I once saw a patient, let's call her Angela, who came to the clinic to discuss some medical problems. We had a detailed chat for several things for most of the consultation. At the end, when I thought she had discussed everything she wanted to, she picked up her bag and turned towards the door. And then she paused and looked back at me and said, Doctor, is there a treatment for low sex drive? That's when I realized this was what the consultation was actually about and she only just picked up the courage to ask about it at the very end of our consultation. Anyway, I'll tell you more about what happened with Angela in a little while. But for now, let us look at the characteristic features of sex drive in women. A woman's sex drive can naturally go up and down depending on what is going on in her life at the time. Your sex drive is determined by several different factors. Your hormones, for example, sex hormones like progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, other hormones like dopamine and serotonin and oxytocin and more can affect sexual attraction, attachment and desire. There are psychological factors which could be affected by stress as well as your emotions. Social factors like being in a relationship and other external factors to that. As well as the culture that you live in or that you are brought up in, which includes your personal experiences and beliefs. So all those could work together to determine a woman's sex drive. But how could you tell or how would you suspect if you have a low sex drive? First, you may have no interest in any type of sexual activity. You may not or hardly experience any sexual thoughts or sexual fantasies. Some women find that they are worried they do not experience any sexual thoughts or fantasies which gives them a clue that something may be wrong. And lastly, it may be your partner who actually complains that things aren't right in the bedroom and indicate that there may be something different about your sex drive. And we talk about low or high sex drive. Well, how do we measure if your sex drive is low or high? Well, we have no way of actually measuring sex drive the way you measure a pulse or blood pressure, for example. And some people may have what we call a low sex drive and be perfectly happy and there isn't a problem, while others may consider it is a problem. So what should prompt concern is if there is no sexual desire when it is expected or it is not as frequent as what it used to be. And now let's look at some common causes of low sex drive in women and we can categorize them into four broad groups, relationship, physical, psychological and hormone based problems. Number one, relationship problems. One of the first things to consider with a low sex drive if you're in a relationship is whether it is contributing towards your low sex drive. For many women, sexual intimacy naturally progresses from an emotional connection. And so, let's look at some of the issues that could affect this. First, are you happy, comfortable and fulfilled in your relationship? Because these elements affect you emotionally and therefore your desire to have sex. Secondly, are there unresolved conflicts, trust issues or even constant arguments between you and your partner? Because these will certainly affect your libido. Thirdly, 
This might affect long-term relationship where you've become either bored in the relationship or over familiar with your partner and there could be communication difficulties that make it difficult to create the intimacy that leads to an arousal. And don't forget, poor communication can mean a difficulty talking with your partner over general issues but it can also address finding it difficult to actually express your sexual preferences to your partner. Finally, are you allowing other things like social media to take over the intimacy in your relationship? Spending excess amount of time checking up Facebook or looking on Instagram instead of conversing with your partner might slowly pull away at the intimate connections that you once had. Okay, let's look at the second category and this time I'm looking at physical problems. We've got a few elements in this particular category and I'm going to start with sexual problems. You might experience problems during a sexual encounter that affect your desire in future. For instance, painful vaginal sex is a very frequent complaint that's caused by lack of foreplay or vaginal dryness. You can learn more about other causes of painful vaginal sex in this video here. And other sexual issues include being unable to have an orgasm or a problem called vaginismus. Vaginismus is when a woman experiences an involuntary tightening of her vagina, that is, she cannot control it. This can be very painful and can lead to difficulties during penetration and an overall unpleasant sexual experience. The second element in this group of physical problems is excessive tiredness or fatigue. Traditionally, women are thought to use the excuse of tiredness to avoid sex, but actually there is a lot to this particular symptom. Tiredness can happen from medical conditions, for example, anemia, where there is low blood iron levels or levels of other vital nutrients. But it can also happen because you're stressed out at work or having to deal with or look after children and other people or relatives. And third, let's look at other medical illnesses that can affect your sex drive. We've mentioned anemia already, but other conditions like heart disease, such as high blood pressure, or metabolic conditions like diabetes mellitus can contribute towards low sex drive. In addition, you may have an underactive thyroid, which is when your thyroid glands are not producing enough of the thyroid hormone. This can also contribute to having low libido. While we know it's not so common in young people, cancer can also affect your sex drive, as well as having major surgery to your genital organs, for example, operation on your breasts, or on your genital tracts or removal of your ovaries or womb. This can either affect your body image and self-esteem or contribute towards reducing hormones that, con that affect your sex drive. And number four in the physical category refers to medicines or drugs, particularly those that we get on prescription. Many different medicines have a low sexual drive or loss of libido as a side effect. Here's a list of some common examples. Number one, antidepressants. Number two, medicines used to treat high blood pressure, also known as antihypertensives. Number three, drugs used to treat seizures or epilepsy. Number four, some drugs used in treating certain mental health conditions known as antipsychotic medications. And five, hormonal treatments like the combined oral contraceptive pill or the ring or the patch, whichever form it comes in. Other types of the pill like the mini pill or progesterone only pill the depoprogesterone injection, the progesterone implant and the progesterone coil can also contribute towards changes or loss of libido and sexual drive. If you suspect that a medicine that you're taking could be contributing towards your low sex drive, the first thing to do is to have a look at the information leaflet that the medicine came with if you have access to it. If it is listed, then you must speak to your doctor about possible alternative medicines. It's important to do this instead of just abruptly stopping the drug because that could affect the condition for which you're being treated. And number five in the physical category, lifestyle. Habits that we have could contribute towards low sex drive. Some of them we know of include smoking. We know smoking can affect circulation and scientists believe this can affect your sex drive as well. Excessive alcohol use and taking street drugs like cocaine and heroin and other illicit drugs can also affect your sex drive. Is there any of these reasons that surprises you as a cause of low sex drive? If so, let me know in the comment section below. Let's carry on. 
The next major category is psychological problems. So far, we've seen the impact of relationship problems and physical problems. But psychological problems can include a wide range of different issues. For example, negative body image can affect self-esteem and desire. Feelings of stress or tension from work or other circumstances could affect your desire and arousal. If you suffer from general anxiety or other specific forms of anxiety, it might make it difficult for you to experience arousal or interest in sex. But in addition, if you experience a worry about sex itself or sexual performance, that could also dampen your mood. And finally, do you remember we mentioned antidepressants as one of those drugs that could have low sex drive as a side effect? Well, did you know that one of the symptoms of depression is low sex drive? We think there are many different causes of depression, one of which is hormone imbalance. So it's thought that possibly the imbalance of hormones like serotonin or dopamine in the brain could contribute towards the low sex drive that some people who are depressed can experience. So hopefully, looking at these different causes should emphasize to you that not every woman has the same reason for low sex drive and so the treatment might differ from one person to the other. And the final category we're looking at today is hormone problems. And one of the most common contributors towards this category is everything to do with pregnancy, after delivery, and breastfeeding. During pregnancy, several different hormones like estrogen and progesterone support your pregnancy, but they could also affect your sex drive. Some women actually have an increased desire for sex when they're pregnant, but for others, it's just the opposite. Thankfully, this happens to be temporary for most of those who experience low sex drive and things return back to normal after they've had the baby. But in addition to the hormones, we should also consider the type of delivery that you've had. Remember how we said earlier that having surgery on your genitals could affect your libido? Well, it applies here as well. Having a C-section or experiencing a tear or cut to your vagina during delivery can affect your recovery. If you want to learn more about an episiotomy or tears to the vagina during pregnancy, make sure you check out this video here where I talk about it at great length. If you develop complications from these wounds, for example, infections, they could affect the length of time that it takes for you to recover. And during this period, sex is not the priority. Another hormone effect is with breastfeeding, which could affect some women's desire to have sex. But hey, let's not blame hormones alone for what happens around pregnancy. Just the fact that your focus is on looking after the baby, or the fact that you're pretty tired most of the time as a new mom, and your body's ch the change in your body may just be something you're getting used to. All of these could contribute to why you're not really interested in having sex for a period of time. Outside of pregnancy is the hormone testosterone. Because, yeah, in addition to sex hormones, estrogen and progesterone, women do have testosterone as well, but in lower quantities compared to men. And testosterone in a woman does contribute to sexual desire. If your levels of testosterone are low, this could contribute to a low libido. And this happens naturally as women grow older and approach menopause. But outside of menopause, certain conditions could happen where a woman's testosterone levels go low and result in low sex drive. For example, having had surgery to remove the ovaries or if there's a problem with the adrenal glands. As you can see, there is quite a lengthy list of reasons why a young woman might experience a low sex drive. But before I forget, let's go back to my patient, Angela. So it turns out that Angela has been having problems since she had her last baby several months ago. She went through a tough time because she developed preeclampsia during her pregnancy. And in order to save her and her baby, she had to deliver by cesarean section. Following delivery, her blood pressure remained high, so she had to start high blood pressure medicines. And it was after that that she noticed that her sexual interest or sexual desire was simply not what it was, and it had started to cause problems in her marriage. This was the point where she came to discuss with me. After discussing things carefully, we realized that it was Angela's blood pressure medicine that was contributing to the problem, and so we changed it to one that was more suitable. And she tells me things are pretty much back to normal. And so this brings me to the last segment of the video. What can you do if you have low sex drive? For some of these causes, you can make changes by yourself by simply paying attention to your habits. For example, 
cutting down on alcohol or stop smoking. You might also want to sit down with your partner, look at your relationship and explore where areas or periods of intimacy are being sucked away by being busy or focusing on other things and not giving enough time to your relationship. However, if you do have persistent relationship troubles, then you may need to speak with a couple's therapist or a relationship counsellor to help you explore and look at where things have gone wrong and how to put things together. By the way, I've got a new video out in a couple of weeks time called what to expect during couples therapy. So make sure you click the notification bell if you do want to watch and learn about that subject. In some cases, you might need to talk to your doctor as Angela did so that we can look at medical causes or look at psychological causes, examine your medication or do tests to help us work out what might be going on. If it's a sexual problem, then a sex therapist is probably best positioned to be able to work with you to look at different ideas or explore beliefs that may have an impact on your sex drive. So that's a pretty comprehensive look with more than 15 different causes of low sex drive in young women. So if anything's jumped out at you and you wanted to ask a question, you can put it in the comments or send us an email on info at askawayhealth.org. Don't forget to share the video and if you found it helpful, give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click that notification bell so that you know every time we publish a new video. Next time we'll be looking at how to know if your morning after pill has worked. So make sure you stick around if that's a question that you want an answer to. In the meantime, check out these videos here and I'll see you again soon. Stay healthy.